Hello again, my friends. Um, today we are going to talk about a familiar story from the Bible uh, about a man named Noah. Before we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer and invite God to open up our minds to his word. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word, for your um, your love for us, for your gracious mercy in our lives. And Lord, we ask that you will bless our time together and help us to receive what you have to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, before we start, let's have a little review from our previous lessons. All right, can you supply the missing words? In Genesis 1, we learned that God, the heavens, and the We also learned that in uh, chapter 2, that God created man in thus making him uh, distinct from the rest of recreation. After God made Adam and Eve, he gave them a beautiful garden to live in. God commanded them not to from the tree of the knowledge of and. However, uh, in chapter three, it tells us how uh, Satan tricked Eve and caused her to doubt God's word um, and his love, giving in to their desire to take control of their own lives. Adam and Eve sinned against God. Although God punished them, he still showed mercy. He provided clothes for them and offered hope that one day Satan would be defeated once and for all. Genesis 4 tells us of the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain was a farmer and Abel the shepherd. And by faith, Abel offered up a sacrifice pleasing to God. Cain became angry and jealous, but God warned him and us too that is crouching at the door and wanted to control or dominate him as it wants to also control us, but we need to over it. All right, let's check our answers. So then God created the heavens and the earth, and God made man in his own image. God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he warned Cain that sin is crouching at the door, wanting to control him and us, but that he must rule over it. Okay, I hope you all scored a perfect 10. And now for Noah. Noah was the great, 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 great grandson of Seth, Adam and Eve's third son. Genesis 5 lists for us all of Noah's family tree. We won't read it now, but see if you can read it sometime this week. You'll see that there is a pattern um, to the chapter. So-and-so lived and at age such and such, fathered a son, and lived for so many more years, and then he died. Only one person in that list did not die. See if you can find him. The repeated phrase, and he died, reminds us that sin causes physical death as well as spiritual. Now, back to Noah. What does the Bible say about Genesis 6, 9 through 13 says, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, 
I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So we see that Noah was a righteous man in a world that was completely corrupt. The Hebrew word here for corrupt describes something that is so rotten that is no longer fit for anything. Have you or anyone you know ever left food in your backpack and forgotten about it? So you might only remember when you smell something strange or maybe you stuck your hand in and felt something squishy, sticky, or gooey, ew. Obviously, whatever was in the backpack is no longer good to eat and fit only to be thrown away. The people of Noah's time were like that. They were rotten all the way through and thought only of evil and filled the earth with violence. They had absolutely ruined God's perfect world. Even so, God graciously and patiently waited, withholding judgment for about a thousand years and hoping that they would repent before finally telling Noah that he would send a flood upon the earth. He told Noah to build an ark and fill it with pears of animals and birds. Although the Bible doesn't specifically say, we can estimate the time that it took Noah um, to build the ark as about mm, 100 years or so. So the ark in today's measurements would likely be about 500 feet long or so, or if you want something to compare it to, about the length of one and a half football fields. Um, another way of visualizing the ark's length would be if you lined up 62 smart cars back to back, um, or if you put three space shuttles um, parked one behind the other. And no matter how you look at it, that ark was big. It was as tall as about two story, two two-story homes stacked on top of each other, and as wide as about 12 living room couches side by side. Genesis 7, 1 through 5, the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I've seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. God chose to save Noah, and Noah obeyed God. Um, he did exactly as he told him to do. It must have been kind of hard to build the ark. Not only would have it involved a lot of work, but people probably would have been like, oh, you're crazy. Uh, what kind of crazy project are you working on? You know, it might have been tempted to give up or do things his own way, but instead he faithfully um, obeyed all of God's instructions. So in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark, they and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, according to its kind, and every bird, according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, 
and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark floated on the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. And the waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep. And all flesh that died moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on the dry land, in whose nostrils was the breath of life, died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heaven. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. So that was judgment time. Noah's obedience resulted in his and his wife and his sons and their wives being saved from the flood that destroyed all of mankind. So then, what can we learn um, from the story of Noah? Well, three things. First, we see sin that is unchecked um, gradually just takes over um, our lives. It's like getting a paper towel and putting it over a spill. No sooner does the paper touch the, the liquid than it starts to absorb the liquid, spreading out until the entire towel is covered and wet. We may hear people say that we can improve ourselves. Um, they talk about different ways to um, make ourselves better. Um, but honestly, if you look at history, and you compare, and you see, you're going to see that, in fact, we really haven't improved. Things that were just unthinkable years ago, we do today and think nothing of it. We just can't improve on ourselves. We need God's intervention in our lives for us to have any kind of positive change. Secondly, we see that sin brings about judgment. God is saddened when he sees our sin. As a holy God, he cannot but help hate sin and must give sinners what they deserve. However, God is also merciful. He patiently gives us time to come to a realization that we need his help. He gave the people of Noah's day all the time while the ark was being built to repent and seek him. I'm sure Noah would have warned all those he met that God's judgment was coming, but they refused to listen and justly receive what they deserve. All the time that Noah was building the ark, people might have said, when is God going to send the rain? You're preparing for a flood. But when's it going to come? We don't see any sign of it. Well, 2 Peter um, chapter 3, verses 3 through 9, tell us that though God does not ignore those who are wicked, rather he wants to give um, us ample time to repent. What God says he will do, just like when he spoke the world into being just as when he um, sent the flood to punish the wicked. God will judge the world. He merely shows us kindness and love by giving us an opportunity to confess our sin and seek his forgiveness. If you perhaps haven't yet taken advantage of God's offer, then I hope you will do so today before the opportunity is gone, just as the people of Noah's day missed their chance for salvation. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you are a just and holy God. Um, we thank you, though, that you are also merciful. 
you know that we can't help, we can't save ourselves, um, but you've provided the way and you give us time to see um, our sins and see how our sins have affected our lives. Lord, we just thank you and we ask, Lord, that you will help us to accept your son as our savior and turn to you and confess our sins and seek forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we close, let's sing a song. My friends, thank you for watching and um, hope to speak to you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you.